It's 2021 and virtual reality still feels like it's 30 years away. How come we can't have a virtual reality that's as immersive as what we see in Ready Player One? Hey guys, it's Cash, and welcome to the future economy. This is going to be the beginning of a series that will show you how advances in AI, blockchain, and virtual reality will lay the foundation for a decentralized future where we will have much more freedom than any other human in the history of our species. I was looking at ARK Invest's big ideas and saw some really interesting trends on there that they projected out to 2030. And some of them look like they converge and it really got me to thinking, can we have a future like Ready Player One? If you haven't seen the movie yet, then stop this video right now and go watch it. And then come back because you're not going to want to miss what comes next. Ready Player One is a dystopian sci-fi movie set in 2045 where people escape from reality by living in a VR game called The Oasis. In the movie, they have this haptic feedback suit and this special treadmill that basically lets them run around anywhere and they're fully immersed in virtual reality. All of these technologies don't seem like they're out of reach from today's tech, so how come we don't have fully immersive VR yet? Well, that's what we're gonna explore today. In the big idea slide, they show us how the global video game industry is moving towards an in-game purchase model. In 2010, only 20% of the revenue came from in-game purchases. By 2020, that was already 75%. Snapchat, Facebook, and Apple are already using augmented reality in their filters, and they've continued to increase their investments in AR. So by 2022, we could be seeing AR-enabled smart glasses coming from Apple and other tech companies. According to their forecast, the AR market could scale from $1 billion today to $130 billion by 2030. What this tells me is that headset makers like Apple and Google will want to be the first to release their own version of virtual reality headsets because it's going to be a huge platform for them and in this kind of uh, market, it's a winner-take-all or winner-take-most economy. Apple has a lot of the pieces to make a pretty immersive VR experience already. Their AirPods Pro have spatial audio so that you can hear where the sound is coming from and their iPhones have the most powerful processors in any phone, so they could technically make a lightweight VR headset that offloads most of the work to your iPhone. If all the processing on your watch, AirPods Pro, and VR is done on your iPhone, then there's a lot of interesting ways that Apple can combine all this data, right? They could use the oxygen levels and your heart rate from your Apple Watch to study how you react to VR games. They could use this data from millions of people that buy their products so that they can develop a haptic feedback suit that adds many layers of immersion to the experience. And considering how good Apple is with their haptic feedback on their phones and their watches, there's no doubt that they're in a pretty good position to, to make a suit like this in the future. If there's one thing we know about Apple, it's that they will not produce a new product unless the technology has become mature enough and to produce that at scale. But all of this is probably a handful of years down the line. So what's available today? Well, we have the Tesla suit which uses electrostimulation for your whole body. It can stimulate your muscles with electricity and it probably feels very weird if you don't use it without the VR goggles. But when you put on the VR goggles, your brain gets tricked into thinking those tiny bits of electric current are objects that you're bumping into. Here's an example of how your brain gets tricked. So humans don't have wetness receptors on our skin. We might feel like we do because we can sense when you, know, when you go out into the rain, you can feel that you're wet, right? And that's like, it seems obvious to everyone, but that's not how it works. The way your brain interprets wetness is through a combination of other senses. So your skin senses uh, temperature and pressure, and then your eyes and ears and all your other senses combine into one coherent picture so that your brain thinks, okay, I'm out in the rain and I feel wet. But there's no such thing as a wetness receptor on your body. You can trick the brain into feeling rain with the Tesla suit by walking into a VR rainstorm and feeling the raindrops on your body. But in reality, 
you're just feeling electrical currents wherever the raindrops are touching your avatar. So it, your brain tricks itself into thinking, well, I see that there's rain around me and there's, you know, I, I feel uh, the pressure on me. So I must be getting rained on. And that's how your, you know, that's how the layers of immersion work. So the more like information that you can give to your body, then the more immersive the VR experience feels. Haptex makes a glove that gives you another layer of immersion in VR. Their glove has 133 tactile actuators so you can feel the texture and it also has 40 pounds of force feedback so you can feel resistance. Dustin from Smarter Every Day did a video on Haptex in 2018 and it really shows how good their tech was even three years ago. Take a look at how Dustin picks up a rock and he can actually hold it in his hand and it feels real to him. And that's because of the force feedback and that is basically the fingers on the glove are pulling back on his, um, on his fingers using the tape on the back and that like m makes him feel the resistance on the rock and that basically tricks his brain into feeling that he is holding the rock. What's more incredible is that he puts a virtual spider on his hand and he can feel every single leg that's touching his hand. If you want to see the full video on the Haptex glove, I definitely recommend checking out the Smarter Everyday video and I'll link it below. Okay, so we have the VR headset, the gloves, and the suit. Now we just need a way to walk around our living room without bumping into any of the walls. The Virtuex Omni 1 does this in a pretty elegant way. You step onto the platform and you put on the vest. The vest keeps you in place and the platform is a very low friction surface that you run on with special shoes or shoe covers. This way you can run, crouch, kneel, and jump without slipping off the platform. You can even walk backwards without worrying that you're going to fall off. This solution is even better than what they have in Ready Player One. The only thing we're missing now is a virtual world like the Oasis. This is one of those situations that's easier said than done. For example, if Google and Apple make a VR headset, they'll want to make their own app store so they can take 30% of the cut from all of the apps on their platform. And in this scenario, it'll be impossible for everyone to log into the same virtual world. Ideally, this virtual world should be modeled more like the internet, where anyone can join it and it's one internet for everyone. And there's many different ways that you can connect to it with like different browsers made by different companies. The same way that many browsers can connect to the same internet, we need an open protocol where all the VR headsets can all connect to the same virtual world so that there's it's not fragmented by companies or you know by special interests there needs to be open protocols to make this happen arc says today virtual worlds are independent from each other but in the future they could become interoperable culminating in what futurists have deemed the metaverse so basically the metaverse is our name for the oasis once we enter the metaverse There'll be an endless list of possibilities that'll be available for us. And that's what we're going to cover in the next few videos. Hope you guys liked this video and don't forget to like and subscribe because you don't want to miss out on what's coming next. Peace.